Hi, I'm Glenn. Um, this is my uh, my first ever attempt at a YouTube video. I um, I already run a tobacco blog over at glenquelch.co.uk, or soon the name will be changed to mrtobacco.co.uk. I'm um, I'm a very very big smoker. Predominantly smoke cigars, pipe tobacco, cigarettes, roll ups, chewing tobacco, I sniff snuff. I blend tobacco professionally. Uh, I also grow tobacco. I'm trying at the moment to uh, to create a range of uh, of UK cigars, UK puros they're called. I had a couple of laughs with a few people online, it's caught a bit of interest, uh, Colin over at the European Cigar Cool Journal was quite impressed with the fact that I'm trying to do it. Uh, as well as that, I'm also one of the managers at Gauntlet's, <coughs> Nottingham's only specialist tobacconist that we've got left now. Uh, we stock over 100 pipe tobaccos, <coughs> carry 160 plus different single cigars, carry everything from little single Hamlet miniatures all the way up to Monte Cristo A's, we do Monte Cristo's from the 70s. Big, big Cuban stockist, but we're also we, we, we promote the New World cigars just as much as the Cubans. As well as that, I also run the Nottingham Pipe Club. Uh, we meet up once a month. Uh, we're pretty much one of the biggest pipe clubs in the country now. Uh, very, very informal. No membership fees, no sign-up fees, nothing like that. We often have sample packs, so if people want to, you know, try some new tobaccos, they can do. And uh, predominantly, that's what we all like. Um, the main purpose of this first video is I'm, I'm going to be reviewing the Fleur de Cano 2010 limited edition short robusto made exclusively for the UK market. Uh, this should have come out last year but for some reason was only released this June. Um, a little bit annoyed with some of this, uh, this Hunter and Frank Howe, the UK importer of Cuban cigars didn't even make me aware that this cigar was available. I just picked it up um, from reading somebody else's review. So this is the, like I say, the 2010 uh, Fleur de Cano Short Robusto. It's uh, got a beautiful smell to it. I really am looking forward to this. The uh, only Fleur de Canos I've ever tried in the past I picked up in Dubai. Um, they were kind of a petty Corona sort of sized uh, cedar wrapped inside um, cellophane. Cigars were absolutely beautiful. Reeked of cedar tasted of cedar and wood all the way through with hints of coffee and spice so I'm really really looking forward to this. Um, I do have a little bit of information on the Fleur de Cano if you wanted to know. Um, only 1200 boxes were made just for the UK market. Um, medium flavour, heavy ringe, short smoke and apparently it's the perfect outdoor cigar. Uh, it comes in an extremely attractive little um, little cabinet box with green printing on it rather than black which uh, really makes it stand out. Just a shame it's covered in health warnings and things like that. Uh, I don't know if you can see this, it's a little bit creased, but to give you an idea, that's the box. Um, they're available to buy <coughs> through the shop at Gauntlet's, which you can find at www.gauntlet's.com. Or alternatively, you can pick it up in the shop, and many of our other competitors online also carry these cigars. So I'm not promoting one shop, I'm promoting a product. Eh. Okay, so to follow on from this, I've just got to wait for a few things to happen. I've got a house inspection coming up today, so I've got to wait for the landlord coming round, and I'm not supposed to smoke in here. So uh, once she's been round and she's gone, the other house is fine, you haven't set fire to it, I'm going to be giving this giving this little bad boy a cut, and uh, we'll take it from there. But I am definitely, definitely, definitely looking forward to this little thing. Right, well... That was a complete waste of time. My landlady never turned up, so stuff her. Right, so let's get the show on the road. So we've got the little Fleur de Cano short robusto, a calibri slice. Beautiful. Nice pre light draw. Not a lot of flavour to it, a little bit bitty, but. Slightly grassy on the pre light. Okay. Probably the worst light I've ever done. First few draws, it's nice, very very sort of a toasted light tobacco, not quite creamy but almost, very very grassy.
very herby. Grassy and herby. Slightly woody, but no. Right, I'll catch back up with you in a bit and I'll give you a little bit more of feedback. Right, so we're back. I'm about 15 minutes into it and I've, uh, I've hit the halfway point. It's really, really developing. It's uh, quite a complex little cigar, actually. I'm really enjoying it. Um, I mean, if you want a little bit of history on it, I mean, basically, it's designed to be the same as the short, short Churchill Robusto that was around about 20 years ago in the 80s, sort of thing. Um, I mean, it was very, very limited supply. The the brand was so, so, um, so well taken, sort of thing. That at the moment, single cigars are selling for thousands. Boxes are going for ridiculous amounts of money. So they've tried to replicate the blend as well as they could, back to the original point. All the way down to they even dug out the original stamps for the boxes. Hence, I mentioned earlier about the uh, the green labels on the boxes. That's all down to the original stamp sort of thing. So to give you a little bit of a feedback on the first third started off quite light, it's got some very subtle floral notes to it, very very grassy core of flavour. Bits of woods and some woods and herbs on the aftertaste. Easy to draw, the plumes of smoke are massive, I just saw. Um, you can feel the strength building up, I've hit the nice midpoint now, and everything's kind of evening out a little bit, but I'm just hoping it still keeps building. Um, very very aromatic, there's woods and cedar, cedar is really coming through now, I'm hitting the midpoint. Um, sweet as well. Not quite, I wouldn't really say it was a honey sweet, but it's a very, very sweet sort of cedary kind of taste. Um, my lighting didn't help very well, I've had to touch light it twice, it kind of canoed on me a little bit, but it's evening out, evening out now. Um, the ash didn't want to come off at all, I had, to, uh, I had to tap it off to touch light. Still burning very, very smooth, but no, it's quite a, quite a good cigar. Um, Question is, can I afford to buy a box to stick in my uh, stick in my stash for aging? Still got them party gas to pay for yet. Yeah? Hmm. Oh well. Right. Anyway, I'll uh, I'll crack back on with this, and I'll uh, I'll catch back up with you probably in about another 10-15 minutes, and I'll give you my uh, my summary of the cigar. Thank you. Right. So we're pretty much at the end of it now. It's um a bit of an anticlimax really. I'm down to well, not a lot. Um. <coughs> Getting a bit bitter, the end's getting a bit tarry. Feels like it wants to kind of fall apart a little bit. But no, it's it wasn't a bad cigar. Um, there was one point where I had to leave the uh, the room because nature called and all that. So uh, when I came back in, I actually got a smell of what the cigar's like. Absolutely beautiful, kind of um, sort of like burning ha um, sort of like dry hay, almost burnt hay and herbs. Smelt very very nice when I came back in. The problem is, it hit its peak in the middle, and then it completely changed. Um, I mean, I got a lot sweeter as I hit the middle point. Almost tasted a little bit like a Dominican, so it got kind of that sweet, fresh, clean tobacco sort of grassy taste, lemony sort of flavour to it. But then it kind of just petered out, and it just mellowed out, and mellowed out, and mellowed out, and mellowed out. It's still, it's still got body, but once you've finished inhaling, it's gone, and you've just got this aftertaste of kind of subtly, subtly woody, slightly sweet, florally, herby taste. It's nothing compared to what it built up to. It built up really well, lots of complexity, and then the bottom's kind of fallen out of it. It's actually a relief now I've got to this end point where it's getting a little bit bitter, because it's kind of giving it a little bit of taste. It's not exactly a great taste. Nothing what I would have expected in the first half, but the kind of bitter tariness kind of adds a little bit more to the end of it. It's not a bad little cigar, to be honest. Tastes quite nice. Tastes very nice to start off with, but then peters out. It doesn't really taste bad. I don't know if I'm just... I don't know. I don't know if I just expect too much from a cigar. But for a little sort of recommended retail on these things is £13. Most of us are selling it for, say, what, 11 to 12 sort of thing. So, I mean, for that, it's a good smoke. It's taken me half an hour, 
So it'd be ideal if you if you're outside, you don't want to be out there too long. There's just one or two of you nipping out for a smoke. I'm between this and a Hoyo, little Hoyo Petit Robust though, I don't know. They've both got their merits, sort of thing. I do like this Fleur de Cano, but I don't. It just didn't go anywhere. Out of the two, I'd probably spend a little bit less money and go for a Hoyo short robust though, but I am still after a box. So I think it's time to uh, to do as I'm supposed to and put it in the ashtray and let it die with dignity. So I hope you enjoyed my first my first video review. Um, I don't know how well it's gone. Um, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. But I'll uh, I'll attempt to do some more. For those of you who prefer reading what I write, the review will still be up on my website, which is clinkquelch.co.uk. Or for those of you that don't know how to spell either of my two names, Glenn or Quelch, you can check um, www.mrtobacco.co.uk. It should be a lot easier and you should be able to spell that. Okay, thanks a lot.